Hey guys, Malku from 1974, coming at you with another new series. This one's based off my old series for Kerbal Space Program, International Civilian Space Program, but this is no longer the International Civilian Space Program. This is the Kerbal Space Program Test Pilot Center. And in this one, I will actually be able to test whatever I want for your vessels. Uh, the old series, I was limited to by a budget and what I could take and what I can buy and I had to miss out on a lot of cool vessels that were just you know overly built but were really cool so let's get started with the N1 Soviet error space moon rocket all right the N1 the mini actually is what uh, it's Arthur calls it uh, it's made by Gus Turbo and I will put a link to this vessel down below in the description so, pretty cool vessel as you guys can tell, very very big vessel, uh, one of those overly built type of vessels, uh, I, won't, I won't lie here, and I also won't lie that uh, I, I'm not, I forgot to check how many parts this thing is, but it's so many parts that it actually lags out uh, the beginning of the launch here, and we have maybe 7 frames per second, but you know with the magic of post modem editing we have actually sped up the whole game here where we're launching this N1 to the moon and you know it's just going super fast but we don't have to be too bored with it and there's Jebediah his first mission in the N1 you know for a, a one-man rocket it, it I mean it's definitely overbuilt I don't know if this thing has a, any actual place in somebody's space program but it's just kind of cool it looks cool and it and it looks very similar to the actual n1 uh, soviet area soviet era uh, moon rocket yes the n1 it was the answer the soviets made to the apollo space programs saturn 5 rocket uh, would have probably have been the largest rocket ever made if it would have actually worked. <laughs> you know, the Soviet space program was kind of uh, uh, plagued with these problems of trying to catch up with the American ones, and a lot of times they did. They beat them in a, they beat them in a lot of the space race when it came to uh, the man on space and all that stuff. Uh, and what I'm reading here on the Wikipedia right now about the N1 is that one of its launches uh, was. One of its failed launches of a test launch to be a, just to test a rocket, it actually blew up and was one of the largest explosions other than a nuclear one ever recorded by humans. If that helps you guys out to see how big this rocket actually was. Uh, finally canceled in 1976 because of, you know, the Soviets really couldn't keep up with the huge amount of money these rockets were costed them so they never got a man to the moon and they actually canceled all their moon projects after this particular thing but here we go we're still trying to get this thing out we saw the separation and as the vessel separates we actually start gaining a lot of frames per second back which is cool and which is what we need Had a trip flying this thing. It was really funny. Right now, I'm just trying to uh, even out my orbital. Actually, what I did on this is that I noticed that the moon was right there, so that's actually a pretty cool uh, separation or a stack separation right there. I really that's my favorite part. But anyway, I, I noticed that the moon was sort of kind of in position there. It, it's kind of a little bit off and I knew I would have to make some adjustments it wouldn't be a clean fly right to the moon but basically I took off I saw the moon where it was decided to just keep going and there is no I didn't actually try to orbit this time I just went straight for the moon as you can tell we're gonna get a little bit closer I'm gonna target it right here and I'm gonna get a little bit closer and I'm gonna notice that it's definitely off because the moon's there and I'm right there so we're actually off a little bit which this is actually an easy fix uh, and yeah it's gonna cost me a little bit more uh, fuel but there we go I just fixed it I'm gonna set up the thing right here to try to get as close as I can to it I mean it's more optimal just to uh, 
You want to do it when the moon's just a little bit, just basically coming up over the horizon. And if you take off like that and you just fly straight towards the moon, you will go straight towards the moon. It's, it's pretty cool. I've always done it that way. Well, I'm not, well, you know, I've always done it as good as I could. Yeah, so the vessel's pretty cool. Uh, I did test this vessel previously before I tried it out for a video. And I can tell you that it's not forgiving in a part where I should have paid more attention. Um, what I mean by that is that at this stage, last time, I still had my other stage. I was flying to the moon on my other stage. I was, I did a, a, a very clean and optimal launch to get to the moon and I didn't lose the last stage we just launched until I was almost at the moon I think if I remember correctly no actually I waited until I was actually no it was until I I actually I actually lost it at the moon after I orbited around the moon I don't know how I did it so I was plagued with I had way too much fuel the last time I tried this and trying to land this thing even though I didn't land it I was landing with still two stages ahead of where I was supposed to be and I had to basically get rid of it back then and one of my flaws right now is that I'm thinking I'm having the same problem but I'm not actually I'm going to show you what I mean we can tell right now I am actually on a collision course with the moon so I do have to uh, fix this a little bit again this is all using up fuel which is not good I'm going to get this guy into position, and we're going to fix this problem. There we go. I'm checking the fuel situation. Ah, there we go. I got rid of that. See what I did right there? I say I still have way too much fuel. So I r literally just got rid of a perfectly good stack that had plenty of fuel left, and I just basically ruined my chances for what we're going to see in the future here and I'll and we'll see what's going on. I mean yeah, I have plenty of fuel right now, but you really 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 need this part of the stack for the landing because the actual lander on uh this vessel has is is very fuel inefficient and we'll, we'll show you. It will we'll show you. Let me let me just get this thing uh, circled here. So basically at this point, the circularization with this stage is going to use up most of uh, my energy. And the author does say that you need this part of the stack to help you land, not land, but help you uh, slow down and get in position to land. And yeah, that's where I mess up. So right now I'm just, there's plenty of fuel in the uh, return orbiter or the LM or the LL, LOM or whatever the hell you call, the Soviets called it. And so I'm just transferring fuel from there to this part of the lander. Uh, there's so much fuel in the front. You don't really need a whole lot of fuel to get back to Kerbin. Um, really, you don't need half the tank of what this thing actually has. But right now, I'm lowering the ladder and getting the guy out there onto it. Uh, the thing is, when you launch this vessel, I didn't—I forgot to mention it, that you want to push four two times, which actually... Uh, locks out uh, your gimbal because you know most vessels you have to do that now I'm separating everything here so this is the lander and according to the instructions you want to keep this part of the stage still on it to help you actually uh, get a position and do as much of the slowing down until you land as you possibly can so I kept the fuel in there it's still what I, I'd have to look again what I got about half the fuel maybe two-thirds of the fuel I'm supposed to no nope, half the fuel which isn't enough I'm gonna tell you right now unless you're a really awesome lander but you know you always need some fuel and what I just did right there I had to set the um, the actual docking port to be the front of the vessel because uh, the pod is actually upside down so all your controls are upside down if you do it that way so I set it to the uh, one part that was on the front which would reverse everything back to the where it was supposed to be so here we go I'm landing as you can tell I'm already running out of fuel I already know I have a problem now I'm a little bit worried because I just lost that stage and I still have basically all this energy that I'm using 
in the regular orbiter and you can see how fast it's going down I mean yeah I got this the video sped up right now but uh, this <laughs> I'm like I'm extremely worried right now and I'm doing uh, you know like time acceleration physical time acceleration I'm getting closer trying to keep uh, my speed down without using up as much fuel as I possibly can and it's literally almost impossible with how little fuel this little uh, lander has it's not very efficient for a lander uh, I could have probably used uh, I don't know so here we go but what I found out later is that for some reason the lander is only using the fuel tanks that are on the bottom there there's actually three or four or five more fuel tanks on the top that is not connected to the system so I actually have almost another tank full of fuel that I finally noticed later on see I'm looking at it right now I'm like oh my god there's all the fuel but it's not it's not showing up so there's three of those uh, five uh, tanks and two of those tens and I'm like well I'm gonna have to transfer the fuel from these into these for some reason it's not reading in this vessel and there's no way to switch to it uh, even though when you launch you launch without the legs it, you're still using the same engine so for some reason I'll have to actually switch these out but I'm still worried about the fuel because I have to actually catch up with the orbiter but here we go we're gonna let the guy come out and this is another uh, flaw in the game watch boom <laughs> you can't actually get your guy out I've tried many times your this vessel will launch your guy out every single time it's kinda of funny uh, it actually did crash my game the first time I tried this I don't know what it, it literally blew up the whole universe I think so here we go we're just gonna plant the flag and we're gonna get this vessel out of here go back to Kerbin Kerbin here we come we'll name it the N1 landing site episode 1 always gotta like episode 1 episode 1 I don't know if I really like the name of it Kerbal test pilot I think somebody's already done that name but oh well what are you gonna do all right, so we're just gonna start transferring fuel here. Get all the fuel going. I'm actually checking. There's actually more fuel in this vessel somewhere. I couldn't find it. I don't know where it was. So I'm trying to look for where the other tank is because, uh, you know, it's kind of annoying to have another, uh, like, five uh, liters of fuel and you can't actually use it so there's the mini there's the we need to get to the lander and this is where everything is kinda cool or we're like well you know I don't think I'm gonna make it but we're gonna try so there I lost the land that's all you lose is you lose the landing legs and they're not that heavy so they don't really cause that much problems and I'm already I, there's no way I'm gonna be able to circleize this vessel so I just ran out of fuel right there even though I still have five liters left and I can't use it. Now I'm thinking about using the RCS to do it. And I'm kind of saying I probably could have done it. I probably could have done it. But I've I've gotten kind of uh, annoyed at this point that I'm... But then I think, well, you know what? I'm going to try something for the very first time I've never done before. I'm going to go EVA with my guy and... I'm going to intercept this vessel <laughs> EVA style while my lander goes and crashes back into the ground. So here we go. I want to catch up to it a little bit, get as close as I possibly can. And I'm going to EVA his butt. There we go. As you can tell right now, I have to use the keyboard shortcuts to get to the map screen because none of that stuff actually shows up. And I do not have a nav ball, so I don't know where to point for target or retrograde or prograde or anything like that. So I am going by where the vessel is. I'm pointing my guy at the vessel. That's why I targeted him. And I am getting this as close. You can tell it's actually circulizing. I'm actually circulizing as EVA around the moon. Now I'm using up a lot of my uh, uh, power in my suit. And I do, I do keep an eye on it. I check it every once in a while. But yeah, I'm definitely... See, we're already... We're already cleared we're already circling and even though I'm gonna try to intercept over here I believe is yeah so I got pretty close 
as close as I can. The thing with the EVA suit is that it lost. This, it likes to switch around on you a lot, especially when you're in a map mode and you're trying to line up these things. So eventually, I'm going to say to myself, eh, you know, I'm just going to use the the orbiter to actually intercept me. I'm going to switch to it pretty soon here. I mean, I'm safe. I'm in orbit. Uh, it should be pretty easy to intercept me using that since I'll have the nav ball to actually. You can see I'm checking the, the EVA suit to see how much energy I have left. And I'm, I'm frantically trying, but what's happening is that you see how the, everything's kind of flipping and going the other way? That's because my guy is flipping. I can't, cause I'm trying, he's flipping on the other side. I can't really see it because I'm not, uh, I'm not watching him. And eventually I just say, this is bull crap. I got like 9% left, so I'm just going to switch to uh, the orbiter, and we're going to set him up, and we're going to intercept him. Now, this has plenty of fuel to do an intercept. I have to get rid of the cowling there to check the engine, and we're just going to do a standard intercept. Now, we're, we're pretty much... The, the orbital planes that we're on here is going to take a little bit of a fine adjusting to get set up correctly but you can tell I get pretty close right here and at this point I want to even out our orbits and we just do that by going retrograde there we go we get everything down to zero now we're on an even plane with each other now he'll be extremely easy to intercept and there we go that was all there was to that bing bang boom Now, where is he? He's pretty close. So I'm going to switch back to him. I have plenty of energy left to get back. I mean, I had 9% or so. And we're now going to the lander. Yeah, I was checking it one more time to see how much I had left. I want to hit this. Uh, There we go. Boom. We're, we are now going to be on our way home. So, you know, not the most optimal way to get back. But the lander, you know, real Soviet style. It doesn't work in my opinion. It's cool looking, but you'd have to make sure you have as much. F make sure you don't do what I did and get rid of the fuel that you should have had. I was trying to be smart and it didn't work out very well, which, you know, is, is a problem with me. So anyway, here we go. On the intercept to Kerbin. Bing bong, boom. Ooh, that's kind of a funky angle I had there. There we go. There is the Ellie or the Orbiter. I don't remember what they're called. Oh, you know what just happened right there? I time accelerated through the planet back around, and I had to do it again. Which lucky I think you don't get blown up when you do that. I separated from the engine. I'm going to turn this around, and I'm going to take this big, huge thing off, whatever the hell that thing is, and there we go. I know it was added to make it look more, to look like what the thing actually looked like, but it had no purpose whatsoever other than adding more weight. So, again, this is a cool vessel. It's not very practical for any space program, even if you're just messing around. Uh, the frames per second is one of the biggest hits that you'll take in the beginning. This, this is the only vessel I had, and this is barely... I, when I played this, this is brand new uh, map. There was no other missions run on this, and I was running at 7 frames per second on launch, which is, you know, kind of terrible. But other than that, it's a cool vessel. It's something cool if you just want to play around with and see if you can do a little bit better than I just did. Or maybe we'll try to recreate what I just did. But anyways, guys, this is Malkuth1974. Have a good one. Malkuth. Out.